There was a couple of nuggets in that veto when we're sort of digging into the gold, seeing the potential stories that we can get with this one. No Anubis, because Payne's been on a four-map losing streak, so they air that. Nuke comes in as the bookend of the series. It's tantalizing, but we'll start off here on Inferno. Banana bombardment as Turtle strikes. That's a snapping turtle, Vince. And that hurts. You don't want to get bit by one of those, but Lux with those Julies. Spitting bullets down on Banana and shuts it down by himself. The ace with the Julies. So much venom. Oh, okay. We go straight from Turtle to the heart of a lion. Man with the Julies just barking at them. Oh. Takes the deep control banana with the MP9, looking for the adjustment if necessary. You've got the deep smoke out as well. It's going to make it a bit uncomfortable for the T's, but they're grouping up for a brackets pop. Um, Mattel still has a good idea that a wrap around the back is possible, but NQZ laying down some fury with the FAMAS and Kawes helping him on the cross. There was no way forward, no hope Ooh. whatsoever. I think a Deagle was purchased in that round. That was the only upgraded pistol they had, but it made no difference, Jackie. It's a clean sweep again. Balcony Bombardment is the call. Timing goes out with the smoke. Nissan's waiting. They bypass him, diving down. There's a quick trade back, though. You've caused a little bit of an issue here. Yeah, they're in pit, but it's relatively isolated. Turtle's just firing out the warning shots. You're going to peek into him, take a bit of damage, but the Doolies come out again. <laughs> the bane of Onyx existence. Kaz with a beautiful couple of kills out on the initial push, saving this round, surely. Unless Matios and Woody can try and chime together, and neither of them have got off the mark just yet in the opening two rounds. We look at it change that now. Molotov's not quite extending. Oh, they line up and Woody punishes them. But there's a HG off the noggin. And Woody goes down for a 3-0 on pain. Ah! Kaz again. So much impact. I was opening two picks with the A1S through on balcony that were the difference maker, stopped the rot, stopped the tsunami of T's from just funneling their way out of apps, blockaded it. And back into pistols again and back into an early death. Pain getting so many early picks here already on this map. That's gonna have to change. Flash bang out, Koaz forced into a different angle, but still passes. No problems with this himself. It's going to be a shutdown round, the one kill in return, the casualty of Koaz. But it is a quick fire, very quick four round. Gone instant peek towards Top Banana, but they look to take the space off if Turtle gets ahead of the Molotov, but Lux has it covered. Well, plays a grenade, though, is going to make sure the biggest error cannot snake his way outside of sandbags. So one for one early doors, the best start that Odic have had. But Coez has the cross from bedroom, an angle they're not going to anticipate. And passes a bullet through the head of Nati, and that's going to be another convincing advantage that falls the way of pain. Yes, there's tons of time left on the clock, but how can they barrage their way out of here? The position's looking good for pain. They don't have anyone on pit, and that's a maybe a, a small problem that Woody can try and exploit. The T's are just getting mauled. It's the backstab that gives them an opportunity, but you've lost a lot of the cavalry. It's not going to get any easier for Woody. Nade round the corner, a near miss on the connection. He drops the smoke to block off the quick rotate in from quad side. Give himself a little bit of a shroud to play off of and just tucks up into it. It's an off angle here. He's paranoid about how close they're going to be. And these three CTs want to just work as a unit on the retake. Molotov and Heichi flash for the top as well. If you want to blind him, he's got one of his own. But the Molly comes in, tagging him down, forces him to adjust. They've got it. And they overwhelm on the retake. And Coez is happy. Uh, and that's kind of the extra caveat that scares me for Odic's life run in this one. Yeah, completely agreed. I mean, we haven't seen Big Zero really pop off. And I mean, he's typically the guy you're looking at. Leading by. <laughs> Suddenly you've got no health left. You're sent packing right into the scope that's playing on the angle. It's an easy opening pick. There's no one there for the quick swing out for the trade either. Uh, Molly's going to make it uncomfortable at least turning up the heat. Almost looked like he was going to get the fade away. But they do at least drop him. Now your next task is how do you get into the bomb site? CT smokes off for now at least. You get the re-smoke out at the back of the site. That's where Big Guzera is lurking in his lair. That is a lair that you have to tread very lightly through. Flashbang up and over, 20 seconds, and Bigger Zera deciding not to go for the peak. He's heard nothing in terms of audio cues. Woody in the meanwhile is sprinting back up, middle, off he dies, that's the bomb. It's the bomb spilled, and even though they have the forward position in the form of Turtle, it doesn't matter, there's not enough time. 
There's not enough time for them to do anything. Maybe they can get a pick onto Nissan, but that's going to be it. One HP separating Turtle from his demise. That's a 6 0 start. And we've already seen that with Payne's adjustments to overpass the map. It looked like they didn't really want to play too much. They definitely got drilled on that. Brace nice. Quick flip back around with a tech to deck the man in the cubby. But even then, you're outnumbered two to one. Minute on the clock here. Ooh, Turtle is hard shell withstanding that opening connection with the orb. You're still alive, but you've taken a ton of damage. So you need to win these fights very cleanly. That's your only win condition of being able to piece together this round. Uh, one that you've got to go for, really. This crossfire is deadly as well, isn't it? Even though he's low HP on the site, it's the backstab and the blade in the form of the A1S. And it's going to rip through the remaining two Ts for a 7-0. And it's more of the same, the economy is building up nicely. Where they will just squeeze map control off of you from the opening moments of the round. Not even a deep mid smoke here. You just entirely walk down with confidence to hold it. Peek towards T-steps, two tags, but no actual frags off the back of the initial gambit for the CT side. Lux is waiting for flashbang is good, the follow damage is there. But Lux will pivot straight back in, forcing it into a one-for-one -one trade. These are the kind of situations, though, that Odic desperately need to grab on for for dear life. They have got to get some success. They're running out of time. Yes, you've got a Deagle and a low Woody, but you have to play advantage. Utilize that. If you want to make the major, these are the rounds you've got to bring and try and take for yourself. Thank you, Z. Strikes again towards brackets and the edge you had. The one-man advantage for the trade game is now gone. The battle of attrition is leveled. And Lux, he's just holding directly ahead of the smoke, playing close to it, knows that the time's tight on it, going to be fading soon. So he backs off and readjusts round towards second oranges, trying to play off his teammates' rotation. They break the smoke, no clean info for either side. Finally, attack comes out, but Nissim does all the work. Easy spray, and a round that still falls into the lap of pain. And the other kick to the gut as well is like, this is Odic's choice of map. Yeah. You picked this. You wanted to go on this battlefield and you are getting absolutely destroyed. However, they've got the first pick, a low Lux on 17 HP. Is this the time where Odic begin to shift through the gears and get us some rounds? And Quez is chilling. He's gone to the other side of the map and oh. is leaving NQZ alone, but he doesn't need anybody else. He's more than capable of withstanding this pressure by himself. Overkill with the orb hitting heads all over the shop and it's repelled the push. He's not content with just two either. Finds a third frag, but suddenly Turtle turns the tides. A hat trick of his own, but you've got to find this man on the off angle. They don't clear it and he's got the trigger discipline. He'll let them in, give them a full sense of security and then smash them to pieces for a tenth. It's such a, a no! sick, heads up, relaxed play oh, from Coez. Oh. That's all NQZ though. Yeah. yeah. Those... Oh, mate, this... It's been rough to watch. It's been beautiful. If you're a CS fan looking at this paint the CT side, it's been pretty damn good. And Coez has been leading the charge. 17 kills, 170 ADR. He's backed himself another couple in this. So you can add a few to that. Woody in the meanwhile, though, forcing off NQZ, but there are strength in numbers. A second player coming through on library. About as one-sided a map of Counter-Strike as I can remember seeing. We've had some blowouts in this tournament. And this is looking like it's going to be added to the list. Oh, there we go. Cheeky backstab. 3v3. There is a chance. But NQZ snatches it away again. And when NQZ lives, your opportunities get fewer and fewer. It's at least... You can isolate the fights. Maybe you can take some 1v1s and build your way into the round. But Lux is here. Blaze pulled out on a slow walk as well. Oh, you're leaving yourself exposed. Switches to the tech. Tries to move up. Needs to win the fight cleanly. Drop to 26 and gets the bomb plant down at least. Our biggest error is only on 31 though. And that Molotov is going to afford him the luxury of repositioning should he choose it. Not sure if it's confirmed damage onto biggest error. So he's playing this one very carefully. Zero in the meanwhile has himself a kit. Has a bit of time to play with, and he's going to be going up and apps. He's hoping he can get the drop on Ponta. We're headed towards the end of this half. He's definitely 100% going for it. He would love to keep this unbroken streak of round wins. 
and he's going to be pincering around the corner. He's dropped, he's made sound, and he should be a dead man. But Biggest Error still shuts down Ponta, and he should have time for the defuse with the kit. Oh, the woes continue. Odic must be devastated. Oh, if they get the 12-0 off the back of this, buddy, it's going to be so rough for you to really do anything. Hell, even the pistol round could just be where this one starts and ends on the second half. Aquares with a simple, straightforward shutdown. There was a flashbang alongside it, but it didn't even connect. Aquares looking for that 20 bomb in the first half. MR12, I mean, this would have been ridiculous in MR15 days, and he's done, gone and done it. 20 and 5. A 3k in this, ADR off the charts. What a performance from this man. He's got the straw hat on, and he is farming. Precision pointer from Ponta as he strikes back at top mid, takes down the orb. Oh, okay, follow up frags there as well, but it's the backstab, the re-peak off the timing from his teammate dropping, looks for the trade and does equalize it into a 1v2. Your back's exposed as well towards T-steps and that's how the 12th is guaranteed. 12-0, a single round on the board for Odic. Smokes, Molotovs all available, all getting tossed in now. Molly's to the back of the site, smoking off the CT side as Matios gets the first. And they've landed a good, well-placed smoke to thwart this push. So they get the opening pick, they force pain away. They're going to try and hit back on middle. The core goes running towards brackets and Woody listening for this. His ears perked up. Oh, he could peck from the back. Oh, it's a bit of a rough one on the face towards Boiler, but he still wins on the fight and brings the numbers down somewhat. You've got time for the rotate in now as well. So the rest of the squad oh, groups up towards Arch, but a big dink on Woody, down to 2 HP. Kawaz is, is so on point right now. Nissim finishes off what he started with the goosh. And Nighty is going to try and wrap around the back of Apps. There's a player up on the balcony. That's going to be Nissim, a double stack. Turtles with him. They peek in, miss him. He's watching many angles by himself, but he's trying to draw away fire and that bomb is starting to get dangerously low on the fuse as well. Coez, five bullets in the chamber, is trying to keep himself alive. Has he wasted enough time? It's gonna be close, but they should have the defuse and Odic will not be 13-0'd just yet. They keep the dream alive. A single mistake would cost them the game and you'd move on to the second. Lux finds himself monitoring no man's land. Double spray. Caught in barbed wire is Matios. Turtle's gonna get the backstab. <laughs> you taking a picture, mate? <laughs> what was he waiting for? Oh, man, I was a little bit worried he was actually just gonna get his lips removed when he turned around, honestly. I was like, oh, mate, don't. Don't go for the blade. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd rather build my way back in and feel my confidence and get warmed up and stuff, so it depends on the players, really. In the meanwhile, though, Odic have been very aggressive on these CT sides. It's constant lurk smoke, and it's another kill. This time it's Lux. Oh, big Guzera. CT side utility, bleed them dry, and then go for the play. Nissim as well could be a real issue. Uh, you've got no one down towards the pit. He can just walk out through balcony, hits the head onto the first. You need to trade this, and you're caught between two positions. It's all going wrong. Oh, it's such a crazy read. The way he played that is like he knew no one was in pit. Must have done their homework. Heard the footsteps around quad side, but that's not to say a double stack wouldn't be possible. But the confidence in which he wide swung out there. Impressive play in Odic. Although they mustered up three rounds, it looks like this is where Inferno will come to a close. Matios and Woody in a two on four post plant. Woody has the kit with an M4 alongside him. But they're also isolated from one another in terms of trying to push in, and that flashbang could not have been sweeter. Fully blinding Woody for multiple seconds. And Big Azera exploits that, expunging the threat. Matteo's taking speculative shots, but he's whittling away his own health bars in the process through the smoke. He's being peppered, comes out into the open, and is shut down. A dominant first map win for Pain Gaming, 13-3. Run away with the game, make it look easy for themselves. Pain one map away from the Copenhagen Major. There are Julies now, they live by it in the pistol round. On Inferno, will they die by it now? Turtle onto that man of Lux who picked up the ace and Ponta's there. It's a 2 4 trade. Odic getting the early aggression and advantage and forcing the tease back for the time being.
but Guzera at least finds the head of one of them, but you're still at a disadvantage. Outnumbered and it keeps getting worse. The Dooley Sing for another, and the last man in Big Guzera, the brains of the operation, is severed. A round you had to win for Odic, and this is a lot better, at least with a bonus round on the side of Odic, but it's not as if they're exactly swimming in cash. Pont is down at 900. Aggression from Big Azera, no one from mid had an idea, and the spray from Big Azera is going to yield two, but Pontus stands his ground and will post up two of his own. A 3v3 trading up to an AK, but he is all alone on 12 HP. Surely Pontus can't manage to clutch this one by himself, down he will fall. So weak off the fight. Got the site control, you've got everything you need. Nade over the top, might connect onto Nissim and blow him out of the service. You're back into a 2v2, but it's still low HP for the side of Odic. Uh, Wood is the only one really in good standing. The longer it goes, the more time ticks away. Dives around the corner, the acrobatics pay off, but you still got to get past the lunatic that is NQZ. Sprays through the woods, popping the cranium of Woody. Looks for the repeak as well, and it is on the money. You can see it, Knight, he so desperately wants to go for that wide swing, but NQZ checking the angle. They may not anticipate a double stack here, though. But Pain, it's a hit and run. They take the kill, they back away instantly over onto the B side. They have a bit of mid control as well, where Coez is waiting. And Matios moves into his snare trap. Two free straightforward frags puts Odic in a very difficult situation now. Slow walk up into the B site, contact maneuver. Nades over the top, the MP9 of Ponta's good for one, but now Turtle's in such a rough angle to really make a play from. Woody's here, sure, but not for long. NQZ with some beautiful taps from the Kalashnikov. He erupts as well. Look at him roaring. Of opportunity and smash through there as fast as possible. The smoke, his eyes, gets caught in the back. I have no idea, but the same could be said of Lux. One form trade, Molly goes down, it's gonna force Matios away, and Woody now gonna try and go for that wide swing, but Big Azera, he's up to the task, Ponta trades him out though. A three on three, but the flick from NQZ will give them the advantage once more. And there's still a minute left on the clock, and two players headed over on the B side. My turtle is laid in wait. Turtle has it all to do. He's gotta be the guardian of the bomb site from this position. Forced off by the warning shots, drops through the smoke. Sees a little bit of info. He spotted the side of the player. Spamming onto the bomb site and at least gets the free frag, bringing it down into a two versus two. They're both grouped up together though. You don't want to peek into this like this. Back towards Quad is the headshot that comes out. And then QZ bides his time pre-scoped and ready to strike. Oh, take their future into their own hands and not be reactive, but more proactive. So these kind of buys, these kind of plays, I'm not necessarily against, but the execution looks a little bit off here, but you've got to execute off the timing. 25 seconds as they walk up into the unknown of the A site. Into the abyss. Because Era leading the charge as ever. HE's tossed over onto headshot, tons of damage, but the time, it only takes a couple of insta headshots and this can quickly get out of control. That Nova's gonna deny the bomb plant for a couple more seconds, and the Deagle on the cross, has he just done it? Has Ponta just won this round? One second to go, and holds his line, he does! Ponta clutches! Purely mid, but the whole team of pain are back at ramp. Look at the positions here, Vince. Oh, this could be carnage. It could be bloodshed and mayhem as a TK. Big Azera blocking the shot from Lux. And the back and forth trades into a three on three. Make that a three on two. A 2v1 suddenly. Nissim stands alone. It was looking as if Payne had this in the palm of the hand on the approach. But now Nissim with 10 bullets in his AK. It's Turtle and Matios. He's anticipating a peek in. He does have the bomb. But only 20 seconds left. Molotov just behind him as well, as you can see. If he wanted that molly, he could toss onto headshot. But he's fully focused on pushing forward. Fully focused on getting that bomb down. And Matios will repel him. Four to four, the score. That's where the weakened knee is for Odic. Put that hero AK in the hands of Lux up on boost. Clearing the window. Expects the angle and finds Ponta. Round. Woody, though. Could find himself a pick here. But again, Lux gets boosted up, and again he gets the entry they were looking for. The verticality catching him off guard. Heads up, boost again. 
Two times he's been put towards the heavens and delivered with his strike from the AK. Up close with the MP9, you got them all and do it cleanly. Fast reaction shot from NQZ, who's been given the orb, scavenged it from the ground makes a difference into this one. And they know they've got time. They, they know they can completely wrap off. Kawes was just waiting outside of B, so you all barrel back around. You'll have a free bomb site to get it down on. And then you're looking at a two versus three retake, even against what you're fighting against here from Pain. This is not going to be easy at all. QZ just making sure no one was going to go for the peak on the CT side. Now goes in for the plant. Kawes joins alongside him with Lux, of course, who's still alive. And I think it's going to be the save. Five seconds. It's sometimes it's going to sting them. It's sometimes going to be to their detriment and to their downfall. But Ponta with a slightly different angle, getting success and the double up body system working right. to go their way. Woody with the boost. Timing on is interesting. Saw the head for NQZ as he falls off. The nade goes awry, but that won't matter. You've got the read onto the orb. Don't play into it. They wanted to peek together on the far swing, so it wasn't exactly working the way they wanted to. And uh, now it really is starting to build into a bit of a pressure cooker for them. You're bombarding out towards the site. Turtle goes for the heads up play, looking to slow down it all on his lonesome. And it doesn't work. The rotations are going to be late. Everyone's so far away. It's a 2v2, sure, but it's not going to be easy. Ponta has to get the backstab off. Nissim's running into him. He's heard the audio cue at least, but how do you even find this? Oh. Nissim decided to fully go out for it. Now NQZ alone in a one on two can see the jump spotting. Has been spotting himself. He knows where both players are now. But his position is compromised. Molotov on top of him. He's burning alive. Still lands the flick. Seven HP left. But Ponta will have the last life. Don't know if he has time, though. Has no kit. This is going to be exceptionally close. The full 10 second defuse may just end up being a little bit of a bridge too far on Ponta. And that is a heartbreaking moment for Onik. Just when. Goddamn. Turtle. Playing up close with the auto shotty, but towards mid, a hero play from Ponta that does not work. You're forced out by the classic Molotov as well that burns towards Wood, forces him to peek in with the XM. You're giving away those initial. Up close with the MP9, Lux is good for these angles and he'll look to pounce. Not straight away, but does take the man down over extension from Wood. He knew he had to do something. But your chances of finding much there weren't really in your favor. The whole round slipping away second by second. Safe call likely is coming up for Matios as well. Can't do much about this with the FAMAS. Economic game of chicken that's constantly been going against Odic. It's not necessarily been all of his fault for his lack of performance, but in the meanwhile, Turtle and Matios lock down the side and have a real chance of getting a fifth. Peeking one by one into the hands of the T's though. And Nissim, he's having a field day with this. Lux is already pre scoped, waits for the peak. The adjustment comes out as the wrist breaker will deliver Woody's in the rear. But Lux has an idea about it. Fires off the warning shot. The no scope that does not connect. Five HP left on him. 34 seconds on the clock. He's trapped between two sides and Woody re-aggresses. At least they get the last one at the end of the half, closing it down. Seven to five. They're looking for the boost. Boost goes up. Turtle fires off the shots. It's weapons that are best wielded in close range, but they don't want to allow them to get into B. Meanwhile, the rest of the T's aggress out A and find their way in. Elevator smoke goes up to block off the MP9 and sends Lux on the readjustment round to CT. You've got site control, but you've still got to wait for the bomb and the rest of the crew to arrive. And while you wait for the reinforcements to arrive, it will afford a post plant to come into play. Smoke down as well. And I don't think they want any part of this. They're already pulling back to save. So on it, that's exactly what they've done. Credit to them. They've bounced back. That disappointing infernal performance is a thing. It's in the deepest part of their minds. But NQZ is going to pass a bullet through the mind of Matios. Same could be said on return, though. But Biggest Arrow with one also gets traded out. So Odic could do... 
You bring in the orb range. Oh, in close position. It felt like he was about to get overpowered by the MP9, but no, Woody steps up to the plate, hits a home run with the orb. But there's a man that's been doing so much damage. He's lurking, waiting for you to walk your way up the ramp, give you security in the round, and then rip it away from you, but not today. Headshot connects, and it's all down to Nissim. Trying to wrap around the back of the tees here and get the element of surprise if he can coil up and strike. But is Woody watching this angle? He is from round. This is going to be so difficult for Nissim. He's going to have to wide swing into the headshot. This one pretty much, and he gets one, and a second as well. One HP. 30 seconds left on the clock. Such an integral moment in this match. And the bomb is also down on ramp. So not only does Ponta have to go back onto ramp and secure the bomb, but he has to pick up the pace. And that audio cue, that step could give everything away and allow Nissim to pivot in for the headshot. Unbelievable clutch from Nissim. And that could be the backbreaking moment. Odic. How do you come back from that? How do you get yourselves back into this game? Early fight towards Ramp, but Nissim again finds Carnage. The pistol's at least trading, but it's going a little bit skew if. It's all starting to go wrong. You're down to a 3v3. Big Guzera, he's got a sneaking suspicion about the position of Turtle. That smoke is allowing him to just hide. Try and give away a little bit of presence so that Woody can strike elsewhere, but he went for that wild spray through the smoke. He's anticipating the biggest arrow is hiding right alongside him. And in doing so, that cost him his life. Woody now, again, having to try and retrieve the bomb behind a wall of smoke. I'm gonna try and find the window to pass through there, perhaps, and catch one of these CTs off guard. There's three separate angles they need to watch out for. Four if you include this smoke. So you can see the biggest error is switching back and forth between the connector through the spawn side, but he does reposition to the back and allow him to watch two at once. Ah! They only have one Molotov to try and thwart one of these positions. Double stack in, double peek. Oh, it's a rough spray from Coez. Uncharacteristic, and he gets punished by Woody's Tech Nine. Always feels like these trades are all equal, though. There's never an opportunity for Rodic to build off three. Or the M4 with the two AKs, rather. It simply finds the timing. But then Turtle just takes him out of the equation. NQC has to try and funnel his way back to the side, but it gets spotted. Although Ponce is still alive. And it's Woody actually on the two HP. Goes in for the peak. Nullifies Ponta. And time is beginning to become a third enemy, a third adversary. But Turtle shuts it down. Both players low. Six HP between the two of them. And Biggest Error can try and thread a couple more kills. Another chance, perhaps, for Odic. But Biggest Error's playing possum. He's playing his time. This is where experience will prevail. Commits onto the plant, but Big Guzera knows exactly where he is. A single bullet is all that he needs. And it is right on target. A 12th round in the bag. Big Guzera. This, they're playing bold as well, walking through the smoke into the hands of Woody, an orb shot that at least silences one. Let's try to clear the smoke, make sure no one's up close here for a quick wrap around, but they're going to be coming back in anyway. Nissim has the MP9 tailor made for these kind of positions. NQC just behind it, flash up and over with a smoke as well. And Nissim has a chance. Flashbang fully blinds him, but he's not going to get peaked. There we go. Odic, that is as clean as you could ask for. It's where they get ruthless. It's where they get aggressive. That could be all you need to catch a T-side off guard sometimes. Up close towards the ramp, the HG ruins them. The 5-7 beats down on top. Ponta's the last man standing, spraying wildly. He's caught between two mines right in the net of Cowers. And that's how it goes. 13-7. They make it to the Copenhagen Major.